that any path, but they at time instant t they have to be in state j. That's what he says. Given the training model and all the training data, we consider the probability of all paths except one condition. What is the condition? That at time instant t the system has to be in state j. That means OT, t feature vector should be emitted by the j state. So that is the numerator here. And that is given by the fact that at time instant t system should be in state j. That is given by alpha t of uh, j and the rest of the observation should be explained by uh, is explained by the beta t of j. So the product of them explains the probability of computes the probability of all the paths in such that they pass through state j at time t and and uh, again fan out in whatever possible way. So that is given by the product of alpha and beta at the same time uh, uh, in the state j, this should be j. So this ratio, we know alpha, we know beta, we know again alpha t, so this also can be calculated. The likelihood that the at time instant t, the OT is emitted by the j state that is computable as shown in this expression. Now we are ready to re-estimate the parameters mu and covariance matrix. So earlier expression for the mu, you please note this earlier expression, earlier expression was like this. All that we did was I am just copying it here so that we can compare it. If we know which are all the observation vectors which belong to J, all that we have to do is the summation of all those observation vectors and uh, number of such observation vectors, okay, whatever. So th that could be, let's say, capital T. But we know that not all capital, all all feature vectors are assigned to one state, but only a par part of it. Therefore, we will take, instead of taking a weighted sum and dividing by N, we take a instead of taking a simple average, we take a weighted average where the weight is given by uh, Lj of t. And that's what uh, the next slide shows. All that we do is instead of taking the simple summation of OT, we do a weighted summation of OT where weight is nothing but the likelihood of the of teeth feature vector being emitted uh, by the jth state. So we take and whatever the denominator normalizing term which is nothing but the sum of all the probabilities, all the, all the likelihoods uh, without being, so that it would be uh, similar to the uh, normalization constant here. Similarly, the expression for covariance matrix is also same way, all this particular term has come in here, it is a weighted product. Uh, weighted sum of the original covariance definitions. So now, so what we have done is we know now mu and covariance matrix, which means we have estimated the parameters of the state distribution associated with the each of the uh, state. And j, j state, we know mu vector and we know the covariance matrix. We can compute it for each of the states j, so which means that we already know capital D. Initially, we re-estimated the value of P, and then we re-estimated the value of A, now we re-estimated the value of B, which means that now we have a revised model, uh, lambda prime, lambda 1, starting from lambda 0 initial estimate. And we do this iteration a few times. Uh, there are various uh, uh, parts, information that can talk about. I will talk about it as we move on. There are various types of hidden Markov models, uh, again, and there are various implementation issues, probabilities, when you multiply probabilities, they become small and small, small. When you multiply 100 probabilities, it becomes extremely small. It may, the value may go below the precision, arithmetic precision of the computers. Therefore, we don't use uh, product of probabilities. Instead, we take log likelihoods in each case, log likelihoods get added up. That is easier. So we use log likelihoods. Uh, how to estimate the initial parameters? We already saw 
how many number of states should be there per phoneme typically we take three but it's up to us and uh, not only we take one uh, um, training utterance but we take many repetition of the training utterance uh, uh, you know it's speak so if it, it is possible that same sentence is spoken by different people then we also get the speaker dependent variation of the utterances and so on uh, there are questions of discrete versus continuous probability functions we will use continuous probability density functions a uh, normal distribution is a example of a continuous probability distribution function uh, it need not be single gaussian it can even be mixture of uh, gaussians and secondly the last point is uh, that if, if, if what we normally do is to estimate on HMM for each of the phonemes, if there are 50 phonemes, we estimate 50 HMMs. If you want to construct a word, when you want to recognize a word, uh, word such as, let us say, the word Mera, then we, it is consisting of a sequence of uh, four phonemes, and each phoneme is associated with the one HMM. There are three states here, three states here, three states here, and three states here. So totally, this word HMM consists of four phonemes into three states, that is equal to 12 states. So starting from a subword HMM, we construct a HMM which for this word using which has a 12 states. So using word HMMs, we can construct sentence HMMs and so on. This construction of sentence HMMs become useful while training. So, so we have covered how to estimate, re-estimate the parameters of a hidden Markov model starting from an approximation, uh, approximate values of the parameters. The approximate value of parameters were derived by making assumption that all phonemes were are of equal duration. Here we stop.